this information is given typed by the user this table is going to be created by VBA it is based on a data table and it has conditional formatting in the background this is what came out of it in a data table you you put formulas here you may put something in this column but eventually you will highlight all of this and do data data table and it will automatically put in these formulas all based on table etc etc so in the background you will find in that cell what they call an array function so how can you do that in visual basic so if i delete all of this and i do Control shift t what it's going to do is it's going to ask is that the number you wanted you can change it if you keep the values that are already in those cells in column b then it will eventually just plot all of this on your spreadsheet and if you go to the background you will see that that's what it's going to look like how did we do that in visual basic i created a subroutine that i call table box and i assigned a shortcut key Control shift t to it you declare a series of variables then you ask with input boxes what are all the values that you want and it stores them in case you change that in cells 1,2, 2,2 etc it puts it by default in there what is already in cells 1,2 which is basically B1 then we are going to start that new table first we are going to delete if there is already one so we are going to say where do you want to start let's say by default a6 but you can change that if in a6 if that if there is already something in there then we delete the entire table around a6 then we talk to a6 with a with statement and we put words on top then we put percentages in the left column i just used a formula there with a loop from 1 to 10 then we put a four we put formulas in this the next row under the labels and one of them is the norm inverse function that uses whatever is in b4 subtracted from one that is the confidence limit b2 and b3 are the mean of the return values and the standard deviation of the return values of that portfolio then we do some calculations i, I won't explain them i guess they speak for itself then we are going to set o range which is of the range type to the range that start at s start offset by one row down and no columns to the right or to the left up to offset by 10 rows down four columns to the right and then we create that data table it's basically a very simple line it says from that range and that range has as we said before that range has to start here and go up to there that's what we did so we declare that o range we did that here and then use on that o range the table protein that has two arguments what is in the row input in this case nothing what is in the column input any blank cell you should really check that this cell is blank i skip that part then we are going to say to column two in that range three four we are going to determine the number format we make sure that everything auto fits and we are basically done but if you want 
conditional formatting bars, which is only possible in later versions of Excel 2010 and 2013. We want to do that in column 5 of that range, a with statement, end with. We are going to declare a variable of the data bar type. We select the entire column 5 in that range. We set O bar to a new format condition of the add data bar type. We regulate them the minimum point, the maximum point. We put a gradient in there. That is the bar fill type property. The direction based on the context. For the negative section, we want a color type of the data bar color. We want a bar border. We want a negative bar format. And we want an axis position. And with. That's all we have to do, but you are doing all of this through VBA, so it will automatically implement a data bar. Let's test it. Control Shift T. If you change the values there, I'm going to make it to uh, 25,000. And the average return is still 0.15 standard deviation. Confidence level, 95%. We start the table in A6, so it will delete the old table and create a new one. And that's where we are. And it shows you here the conditional formatting. So in other words, we have a 95% confidence that the monthly value at risk part is per month. 8,000 something. We have a 90% confidence that it will be only 2,000. And 85 and lower, it will always be a negative value at risk. That means you are making money on your portfolio. But again, there is a much lower confidence there. That was based on 25,000. The only thing that might be a little confusing at this point is the monthly variable rate. You can see now it puts formulas in there. It basically takes the value at risk times the square root of 22 weekdays in a month. Once you have formulas here, the data table for here will automatically do all of that. If you don't want to know more, this is basically a kind of simulation. I recommend my Excel simulations book. It has 80 simulations, also in the financial sector. That's what we were discussing here, but there is also genetics, statistics, Monte Carlo simulations, iterations, etc. GenesisPC.com. If you want to know more about Visual Basic, for there is no Visual Basic in this book, but if you want to do that kind of work with Visual Basic, you need to know more about Visual Basic. So I made for you a CD-ROM with more than 1500 slides on it, and they are very interactive. It asks you questions, where have you gotten it so far, or do you need to go back in this? And it gives you the basic essentials with loops, variables, etc. Formulas and arrays, buttons, forms, and more. GenesisPC.com